Shit. Shit. Shit? Well, shit, Cyrus, really? Is that all you gotta say after this? Shit of all things? Let me tell you what you should be saying right now, you murderer. You, you fucked everything. Settle down, we don't have time for that. He nods into the light. That's right. There's a classic sign of true, a sign of a true fusion bomb. The shot the way it tells now, it's too strong for its own good. Brighton couldn't test the nuclear weapon under Gabriel's surveillance, and it shows it right there. They use too much reactant, and it's becoming self-sustaining. What? What in the world does that mean? It means this whole world is dead. That reaction is going to continue until it's consumed the entire atmosphere, and left this planet as a barren rock. But the whole world, what? He turns from me. We need an out. Prioritize the student. The situation is hopeless. Wait, no, wait, hold on a second. This is impossible. What is he saying? It's gotten worse? Ridiculous, it can't be. No, 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 no. How could this even... Don't tell me, after all that's happened, this is how it ends. Don't tell me that. Oh, man. The light was actually bright enough to dry my eyes. For a second, I'm pretty sure I've died. So sure, in fact, that my concerns for Brighton World are briefly overtaken by personal ones. And then I realized if I were dead, I couldn't think. To my right, I see Cyrus there, confirming the theory. We return home in one less world to worry about. High radiation levels detected. Please remain calm and wait for emergency medical personnel to assist you. High radiation levels? Is he ta it's talking about us. Sir, what's going on? The events of the past hour totally beat me over the head, and I'm still reeling from the events. Right now, I don't know if I should despair over the losses or fear something else. Really, I'm finding it difficult to think I've not just woken up over some over-imaginative nightmare. We picked up some radiation from the blast, it seems. Uh, we'll be fine though, right? Yeah. A, a disconcerting pause. After a few moments, the, uh, the entrance to the, to the room opens with a loud clunk, and people in hazard suits enter, pushing a trolley along with them. Sir? It's just a precaution. Relax. Relax? I need you both to lie on your backs for us. Cyrus do calmly does so, but I do not. I'm going to be okay, right? You will be if you lie on your back. And if I don't, I feel fine. Well, you should. It takes a while for the symptoms of radiation sickness to set in. Mercy, I'm Evanius. Everything was confusing before, but I can easily process my, uh, my threat to my own life. How long? Well, it depends. The longer, the better. Now, could you please... And what happens if they come on fast? Should I be worried? Hey, if you just... Oh crap, I'm freaking out. During the freak out, I noticed that she's mentioning for another person in a suit to come over. We're going to give you something to calm you down. Hold it, I don't want to be calm. This is a perfectly appropriate way to react. If you let us walk... Uh, if you let us work on you, you won't have any reason to freak out. We'll make sure you get over this. Now lie down so we can. I do so grudgingly. Still absolutely worried about everything. The paramedic leans over me. And from what I can tell, prepares to insert an IV. It enters with little pain, only a prick. But it's enough to make my eyes water. After they start, they don't stop. I cover my face with my free arm. I'm gonna die, aren't I? No, you're not. Look, are you positive that you don't want to take something to calm down? It's difficult to talk while I'm choked. Sobbing every half second. I I'm sure. I'm just so scared. I, I hate this. Alright, I'm gonna explain what we're doing in a bit. We're gonna give you a drug that will quickly clear out the radiation of your body and prevent delayed effects of poisoning. I should say, even though it does that, you're still going to feel the early symptoms of radiation sickness, but that's it. It'll only be sickness, and you won't die from it. You're just going to feel really, really gross. We can put you into sleep until the symptoms pass if you'd like. No. Whatever's, whatever's coming, I deserve it. I don't care if I suffer. Just please don't let me. I don't want to die. You're not going to die. It's our job from keeping that from happening. And we're pretty good at it. If you need any further reassurance. Hey, you're not throwing up, right? No spontaneous bowel movements either? At least, not yet. I'm gonna do what? Oh, man. Just remember that it's going to suck. But you're going to live. Your body lost a lot of cells in that blast. And it's going to be bad until they've regenerated. I, I want to go to my room. Sorry, but you'll have to stay here until your radioactivity has been lowered to an acceptable level. I'll take you to your room once that's over with. So I lie on the floor, quietly sobbing to myself. 
I was, uh, medicated, I'm medicated through gravity. I'm terrified, and I feel terrible. And I only feel more terrible that I'm not feeling quite terrible enough. I'm the worst. I mean, what are these tears even for? I'm not going to die. Someone already died. A whole planet of someone's. Don't they deserve my tears? I guess now that I'm home, it's just so easy to distance myself from it. Almost like it never happened at all. I know that's not true, but... Well, it's all Cyrus' fault anyway. Even if I thought him to a nail, he's bought him tooth and nail, he's my superior. And doing that would be... Ugh, I don't want to imagine his face. I make a sincere effort not to look in his direction, even with him lying right beside me. I gaze instead at the back black ceiling, trying my best to feel as empty and non <laughs> nondescript as it is. Alright, that should do it. The words break me out of my self-induced trance. The person in the hazmat suit has since removed it, and when I turn, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad to find a bare hand and a smiling face offered to me. Let's be off to your room, then. Okay, thank you. She helps me on my feet, which are currently very unsupportive. I feel significantly weaker than average, which is saying a lot since I'm constantly aware of my own natural physical weakness. I sway slightly. But I don't know if it's due to the radiation or just my nerves being completely shot. As the paramedic leads me to the room, I don't bother checking back to see if Cyrus is still there. When we arrive, my roommate is standing there against her bed reading. She looks casually in our direction, but withdraws at the sight of me. Winter, holy sh... Uh, what happened? Not right now. How are you... Uh, do you need any help? Madam, is she alright? She'll be alright, but I, I think right about now she needs to puke. Uh, the lady is right. On the long way over here, I started to feel n uh, nauseous. I start leaning toward uh, forward to indicate that I want to go to the bathroom. The medic notices and lets me go. I stumble forward and take off in a sprint to the toilet. When I reach there, I immediately toss up the seat and start vomiting into the thing. It's awful. From the outside of the bathroom, I hear the paramedic's voice. Do you want me to stay with you? I open my mouth to answer, but quickly close it, as it is not words that are about to come out. Sweet, sal uh, sw uh, sweet saliva washes over my tongue, and I grimace, spitting it out in a hurry. That feeling of rolling hurl continues, and I keep trying to expel the nauseous watering. On a fourth or fifth, or whatever, I'm not counting it, attempt that comes out more like sticking drool. A wave of vomit arises. Uh, 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 it passes through me violently, and tears form on my eyelashes, breathing again, puke-filled toilet into the puke fuel toilet. I somehow managed to answer her rather blowing chunks again rather than blowing chunks again. I'll be fine. My stomach is gurgling. Panting over the rim, I listen to the other room. You're her roommate. Uh yeah. Do you have anywhere to go right now? Or is it the next few hours for the matter? No, no. Great, stay with her please. She'll probably be in there for a while. But just make sure the call if it seems any worse than it should be. Like how? How much worse could it get? Well, actually, it shouldn't get any worse than this. Uh, than it is. I just want you to phone us with your Hall's emergency line if she's suffering too much and needs a sedative. Alright. What is it anyway? Is it just a stomach virus? Or is this about her assignment today? Uh, the latter. She got radiation poisoning from an out-of-control fusion reactor. We've lost a system. The air was completely burned away. Waverly really doesn't respond to this, and the silence is long. As if to fill it, I throw up again. Don't worry, it's only sickness. She's not radioactive anymore. Now I need you to listen. This is important. Make sure she doesn't eat anything tonight, okay? She should fast a bit for now. Tomorrow morning, though, get her to eat and to drink lots of liquids. As awful as she feels, I need to make sure she does. Can you do that for me? Yeah, I can. Excellent. Hey, are you sure you don't need anything? Hearing this, I don't even consider it. Though I'm practically in pain with this <laughs> gastrointestinal warfare, right now I think I seriously deserve to suffer. I need some kind of punishment. I don't want to feel okay after what happened. No, I don't want anything. My stomach's gur gurgling again. I close my eyes. I think I'm going to need to start sitting on this soon. Oh, God. Alright. Your debriefing has been pushed back until tomorrow afternoon, in consideration of your state. You should also try to visit one of the counselors tomorrow, or on the first week if you aren't feeling up to it. Don't let this eat you up inside, alright? Okay. 
Good. I'll be going now. Be sure you uh, to have your roommate call us if you need anything. I can't see the paramedic leave, but I hear the door close. Oh no. I let loose into the toilet again. Oh, gross. I flush and then roll over on the floor. Whoa, shit. Seriously? Already? I mean, hey, you alright? Oh, right. I guess that might have looked like I passed out. Although, with how I feel right now, like, that could happen. Yeah. Stomach gurgling. Nope. I kicked the door shut, forcefully. Something's certainly, uh... Something's coming from somewhere else. Gripping my admin as hard as I can through my sweater, I lower my pants and get onto the seat. This is torment, seriously. I don't know how long it's been, but it's all that need uh, that's needed to pass. Seems to have passed now. And I've taken a shower and brushed my teeth for good measure. I crawl out of the bathroom and flop onto the linoleum. Hey. I look at Waverly with what little strength I have. She looks upside down from here. You look green. Hey, I'm gonna help you up. You shouldn't be in the bathroom all day. It's bad, being in there. I showered. Yeah, I know. She bends down and takes me by the arm, lifting me with relative ease. But, seriously. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I think I'm done, anyway. Can you bring me to my bed? Well, I didn't pick you up to bring you to mine. Come on, I don't want to drag you. It doesn't matter what she wants. I like the strength to move. She drags me regardless. When we reach my bedside, she tosses me onto the mattress, or my mattress. With her hands at the edge, she tips her head and looks at me. Yes? Can you talk much? I think if I talk any more than what, uh, than what I'm doing now, I'll spew. Sorry. It's okay, don't worry about it. She looks at me like she wants to say something, but doesn't. She pushes uh, from my bed and moves to hers. I hear it creak as she climbs on into it. Hey. Yeah? Did you actually almost die? I did. The assuredness with which I speak my words somehow shakes me. I feel fear again for a moment, but it passes quickly passes. I'm alive and safe. It's okay. Waverly doesn't say anything, and I can't turn to see her. I didn't die, though, and my mentor didn't either. Ah, my eyes hurt, my head hurts. Waverly, can you turn off the, your lamp? I'm sorry. After saying this, I fall silent. I hear soft footsteps, and in a second, it's dark. It's almost a comfort, this void. But nothing right now could make me feel better. I apologize to Waverly again. She says nothing. But I can tell that she has an answer. I don't know what the answer is. But it seems hard to say. That's fine, though. My eyelids are heavy, and my skull is throbbing. I feel like I'm going to drown in sleep soon. That sleep you get from medication. Thick and unnatural sleep. I don't, though. I just feel weighted and queasy. I stare at nothing and listen to the settling of the dorms. I can hear people walking through the stone howls. Although it's late, wind is swirling out about the mountains. There's music coming from somewhere, out, so, somewhere else. It, uh, light and haunting. Slipping away from my consciousness, I begin to close my eyes. We never paid for our drinks. was good. I like that. Oh, they got a little animated scene at the end here. Too bad this isn't continuing. I would like to see more.
This is so bleeding awkward. Oh, it's continuing. All right. I know that taking care of winter is my responsibility, but well, I can't. It's past twelve o'clock, and I still haven't gotten brazen enough to wake her. I managed to drop the ball with the simplest task: make sure she eats breakfast. She just came back so depressed yesterday. I have no idea how to strike up a conversation with her now. I want to cheer her up, obviously, but I just... Okay, first of all, I don't even know her that well. We've only been living together for a few weeks. Sure, we've been friendly, but, you know, I wouldn't say we're friends yet. Still, as a roommate, I feel like I should at least try to make her feel better. Man, maybe that would just make me seem like an asshole. Like, oh, don't sweat the small stuff, Winter. It's just one world lost, and there's plenty of those. It's a fantastic situation we have here, in a room, whatever number it is. I'm not total. I'm totally not equipped to understand how she's feeling, and I'm not qualified to pester her. I'm not able to even get what happened to her. How does all the world's air just burn away? With the demon summoning, and a crazy undone seal, curses and abominations from distant space. Huh, that'd be worth seeing. Huh? Someone at the door. Maybe this will force me into action. I walk over, prepared to answer. It's the northerner. Pretty as usual and handsome all the same. Crossing his arms and putting on a serious face, he addresses me. Waverly, yo. I'm here as foes. Hey, yo, yo. Heard, uh, views on the mend. Came to give her a hug. That's great, but I'm not letting you in. He stutters in puffy disbelief, as if what I just said was the most preposterous thing. Huh? Why not? I think you might want to hug her. <laughs> hug more than her. R ridiculous. He draws a slow, fake punch. I must make it past you. Therefore, I challenge you to a duel, Waverly, and the reward will be a ten-second hug for Bew. I bring up my own arm, in the same mock attack. Oh, getting it from her? Or giving it to her? Oh, I'd give it to her. But I need longer than ten seconds. Extending a finger from my fist, I pointed at him. No. Stop right there. His lips tremble for a few seconds, but he prevents a smile. Winner hugs Bu, agreed? Fine, but you will lose this game. He rolls up his sleeve and offers me his hand. The more? Let us dance the dance of combat. Linking hands, we both raise our thumbs and stare intently at the battle zone. One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war. We pass our thumbs over one another as we speak the rhyme, and when we finish, we clash. We struggle for a few seconds before Io speaks. This is so dumb. I think it's a good way of getting the point across. A weird, otherworldly kid's game where two opposing forces battle to the death. A great metaphor for the philosophy of some systems. Sure, sure, but something's wrong here. If I had this much fun fighting in a war, I'd be worried about myself. Huh, well, I wouldn't say the stakes are quite as high here. Do you think they'll give us more rhymes for other concepts? If you see a loaded gum, you had better fucking run. <laughs> uh, pretty true, honestly. Uh, people people hate. It's what they call discriminate. He laughs, and the, our, thumb war, our thumb game continues. Playfully, neither of us tries very hard. So, you heard about Winter? Yeah, me and the other idiots who accepted the title Promising were called to the emergency meeting last night. It was like at 2 in the morning. He looks at me. Cyrus showed up. I also look up. Really? So what happened? You don't know? I look back at our thumbs. I only sort of know. Cyrus killed a country's leader, and that leader ordered something called a nuke and launched, uh, to be launched at the, another country after his death. The thing could basically wipe out a city. I whistle. Ah. And nuke, you see, is short for nuclear weapon. He says this quite, uh, quite haughtily. Oh my, the ed education you folk receives dazzles me. Please do try to keep your language simple, so that I may understand. I feel him smile at this, and he replies jokingly. Sorry, sorry, I'll try. So how'd this thing that you could wipe out a city wipe out a whole planet's population? Well, you see, there's actually one special type strong enough to do that. I'll admit, I didn't know about it. Uh, the true fusion bomb, a bomb that makes star, makes stars when it blows up, I think. 
I don't know. I'm kind of taking this out of my ass. Basically, star on planet equals bad. It killed everyone. Huh. What did Cyrus have to say about all this? Nothing. He just stood there while the other meteors explained the situation and told us that we should be paragons for our peers. Like we're supposed to be mature about it and not joke about it. Which is pretty damn presumptuous if you, if you ask me. No one's going to be a dick about it. Hmm. I guess some kids aren't going to understand how serious this is, though. A world just committing suicide with a weapon we've never even heard of is almost compl comically insane. If you told me about that before the teachers did, I'd call it bullshit. Hmm. Anyway, let's finish this. I'm getting tired of holding you. Aw, oh, really? I can't hold your hand anymore? Maneuvering my thumb with what I'd call some real impressive dexterity, I put pin him down for the count. No. After a few seconds, we disengage. Ah, oh, damn it. He scowls and lightly massages his thumb. Well, it's your win. But I've won the warmth of your hand in the palm of my own. Oh, Ferris Waverly, I will cherish it forever. Shut up. Has the beam been asleep the whole time? How long has she been out? Out like a light for, like, something like 14 hours. He whistles long. Well, I suppose not all humans are as durable as me. Yes, we are not all northern strong. He beams and points at me with both hands. Yes, you said it. Closing his eyes, he puffs out his chest and puts his hands on his hips. We're born and bred badasses, made tough by the tundra and snowdrift. Don't you forget it. Never, comrade. But, yeah, I can't let you hug her. I can't let you win to hug her. Not with those powerful arms. Standing at ease, he answers me smoothly. I'd be soft about it, ma'am. I'd be sure she'd get more out of, me, out of it than me. Hey, watch yourself. He smiles. Touch you less, hey, it's fine if I can't. I love Bio dearly, and I'd love to comfort her, but I understand if the little tyke needs some rest after all that went down. Yeah, she probably does. <laughs> Go away, Vary. Don't tell me you haven't even checked on her. I turn my eyes away. Well, what does he expect? Am I meant to sh just shake her, awa uh, her awake and ask, how are you feeling? I didn't, didn't even make sure she doesn't have a fever, Waverly?